Um, this presentation is about uh, functional differences between Fisher and Neyman Pearson theories and how they got cloaked into confusion when, when using similar concepts. Now, the conceptual similarities actually started with Neyman Pearson borrowing concept from Fisher. But as the two theories got confused uh, in time, um, new concepts created by Neyman Pearson were used to um, name um, Fisher concepts when presenting the theory as well, um, which fostered even more confusion. Now, this presentation is not about the historical use of the concepts per se, but about how those theories and even uh, is mixed into null hypothesis significance testing is presented today. Uh, for this reason, I use a series of uh, the most popular YouTube videos on significance testing on the web. And um, it's interesting because some of them actually present like two methods. Like, for example, in this case, Ken Academy talks about uh, the p-value and about a significance level. But then he talks in a, in a different video about um, another way of testing using uh, threshold values, um, a significance level based on type 1 errors, and a critical region. So you would think that the former video is talking about Fisher's um, test, while this one is talking about Neiman Pearson. The same goes with another popular video by Poisonmas. Um, he talks about the traditional methods, which we may assume to be Neiman Pearson's, and then he talks about the p-value method as an alternative to the traditional methods. And but well, p-value just brings to mind Fisher's methods. But really, when we look into these videos, we see that they are quite remarkably similar in presentation, concept use, and procedure. So basically, is why are we talking about two different methods when they are basically the same? It's like if somebody asks you for a dollar, it doesn't matter if you present it face up or face down. They are. It is the same dollar, basically. And this is what is happening with these videos. And this is because these videos are about null hypothesis significance testing overall. So let's let's see uh, how this creates confusion. Now we know that the main difference between Fisher's and Neyman Pearson's approaches is that the latter, Neyman Pearson, considers an, an explicit alternative hypothesis. Now Fisher's research hypothesis is too imprecise for testing. So he uses a proof by contradiction principle based on the negation of this research hypothesis, which, you know, like the no, no, uh, the no hypothesis, right? While Lehman Pearson has two explicit and precise hypotheses, actually. So the most important one will be used for the test, while the alternative hypothesis provides further information, for example, about the effect size in the population, right? So this alternative hypothesis actually reads as, for example, there is a large difference between population groups, and this large difference is specific. For example, a D of 0 0.8, a standardized uh, difference. So the research question here comes down to be, which hypothesis explains the sample's research better, the main hypothesis of no difference or the alternative hypothesis of this specific large difference? Um, on the other hand, we have that both Fisher and Neyman Pearson carry on the test using a single hypothesis, which is statistically centered on zero and therefore is called the null hypothesis. Now, for Fisher, the null hypothesis is, as we saw, the negation of the research hypothesis. But for Neyman Pearson, the null hypothesis is a choice, is the most important of those two competing hypotheses. So, what is today the null hypothesis may be the, the alternative hypothesis in an, another research context. Now, this null hypothesis is standardized to zero statistically, um, for you know, because of statistically uh, purposes, but it does not affect the true difference that exists in the population. So, when we look at the null hypothesis, we can see that it compares, to make sense, you need to compare it against alternate hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis will be there is no large difference between population groups in our example, and again, this difference being standardized to zero uh, using Cohen's for example. In, in another aspect to consider is that the statistical test reduces to locating the research result in the distribution of this null hypothesis and to ascertaining how stream or into details uh, of this distribution the research result falls into. Right? Now, Fisher's ascertained where the result is so extreme that 
you could doubt the null hypothesis. Therefore, this result is significant, significant, and the more extreme, the more significant it is. So he uses conventional level as like 5% or 1% to help identify significant results, and he called it the level of significance. And Neiman Pearson only want to make a decision, either the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis is playing the research results better. Therefore, the cutoff point reduced to a probability of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis at the type 1 error, right? They also call it the significance level, or alpha, and they also use a convention of probability such as 5% or 1%. So it's quite similar in this sense. But Fisher's level of significance is not a decision threshold per se. I mean, the, the initial level of significance that you use can be adjusted to account for greater significance later on. So, for example, uh, you could start with a 5% uh, significance level indicating significance, but then you can modify it if the result is, is small enough and to cater for a 1% uh, level indica indicating high significance. In the case of Neiman Pearson, for example, because it's a decision threshold, this alpha level cannot be flexible, they cannot be moved. You cannot move the post uh, to, to, to suit your research results. Um, also, Neyman Pearson's level of significance stands for information provided by the alternative hypothesis. Now, Fisher's alternative hypothesis provides no information to the test. You know, this is actually they don't have uh, this test of have an alternative hypothesis proper, right? Uh, but Neyman Pearson's alternative hypothesis do provide information. We saw already provides information about the effect sizes in the population, but also provides information about the probability of making a type 2 error, or beta, and the power of the test to capture this alternative hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis applies. Um, and also, incidentally, Neiman Pearson preferred the critical value to its probability alpha, right? And this is another reason why the alpha cutoff cannot be moved, I mean, why it needs to be fixed. Because if you move alpha to cater for more extreme results, automatically beta increases and power, power decreases. Also, just as a, as, as I note, the critical value and the alpha are equivalent, so you could use one or the other. Another difference is that the research result is considered statistically significant if, the, if it falls beyond the level of significance, right? But again, for Fisher, he prefers to use the the exact p-value because the it, it is a direct measure of evidence against null hypothesis. Okay, so the more significant, the better. But Neiman, Fish, uh, Neiman Pearson only needs to make a decision if the result falls beyond, uh, you know, under the null hypothesis, you accept the null hypothesis. Otherwise, you accept the alternative hypothesis. You may call it significant or not significant as well. And we're coming to make a decision. Um, of course, the decision depends on where the, the research result falls under this null hypothesis or and the cutoff decided. Okay, so if in the case of Fisher, if the result is not significant, you fail to reject the null hypothesis because you only have this hypothesis on the test, only one hypothesis. While if the result is significant, then you reject it. You reject that null hypothesis. In the case of Neiman Pearson, however. Um, you can accept either hypothesis depending on where the research result falls because you have two hypotheses. So a not significant result, actually you could interpret it as a fail to reject the null hypothesis, but also you could say, well, I accept the null hypothesis depending that the power is adequate, or you conclude, uh, or you say that the results are inconclusive if power is ina inadequate. And when the result falls beyond the threshold, you accept it as significant, meaning that you reject, well, you can interpret it as rejecting the null hypothesis, but also you can say accept the alternative hypothesis. Another thing to consider is how the authors call the tests, so Fisher called them tests of significance, while Neiman Pearson called it test of a statistical hypothesis. And this is a summary of, of how uh, the concept actually looks very similar, no hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, etc. But we know that they are different theories and they, those concepts have different uh, functions. So using the same concept actually is basically quite confusion, confusing. 
And the best approach here will be to reconceptualize those, those, those functions so that they are less prone to confusion and for us less prone to confuse those theories as being the same. So the best way of, of clearing the, the field is to use concepts that fit the functions of, of each uh, theory. And we can actually start with a first clarification uh, regarding name, the name of the procedures themselves. So Fisher seeks evidence and a significant result provides this evidence. So calling it test of statistical significance or simply test of significance is an appropriate name for the procedure. In the case of Neiman Pearson, however, they look or they seek a decision between competing hypotheses. So actually it should be renamed as a test of acceptance. A second clarification has to do with the null hypothesis. Now in Fisher's case, the null hypothesis is created specifically as the opposite of the research hypothesis to serve as an exact test. So calling it the null hypothesis is appropriately. Now in the case of Neiman Pearson, the hypotheses are based on existing population and the one used for the test is the most important one. Therefore, this hypothesis is better reconceptualized as the main hypothesis. And now we come to alternative hypothesis. So Fisher has no alternative hypothesis. This is a merely a negation of the null hypothesis. So because it contributes nothing to no information to the test, we don't need to use it. So if at all call it the negation of the null hypothesis. With Newman Pearson's alternative hypothesis, however, it exists in the population and provides important information to the test. Therefore, the use of the concept of the alternative hypothesis should be exclusive to Newman Pearson's procedure. The first clarification has to do with the level of significance. Now, significant normally means evidence or not worthiness of the research results, and this is what actually Fisher's approach seeks. Uh, but we need a new shorthand to represent it, and I propose here significance as SIG. Uh, in the case of Newman Pearson, they are interested in making a decision with the, between hypotheses, and the cutoff point is just a level of acceptance. Uh, and this decision is based on uh, reducing the type 1 error probability. So we can represent it perfectly with alpha. A fifth clarification has to do with p values. Now, Fisher's p values are source of evidence against the null hypothesis. The more precise, the better. Okay, so we use p values with Fisher. In the case of Neiman Pearson, we don't need p values, but we can use those as proxies without evidential role. So if we use these p values with Neiman Pearson, strip them of any numerical value and bound them to the level of alpha selected. If confused, choose test statistics instead. A sixth clarification has to do with uh, decision errors. Fisher is not concerned with decision errors at all. Uh, so this should be exclusive to Neiman Pearson's approach. Alpha, beta, and power are exclusive to Neiman Pearson's. The seventh clarification has to do with the significance of the result. Now, as we saw earlier, significance only happens under Fisher's approach. Okay? And um, so we should use it only with this. In the case of Neiman Pearson's approach, the result is accepted under the alternate hypothesis the main hypothesis or is inconclusive and this should be the concept that we use with this approach. An eighth clarification is how to interpret the results. In the case of Neiman Pearson is either a rare, rare chance occur or the null hypothesis does not explain the research results. In the case of Neiman Pearson is a decision regarding which is, uh, uh, hypothesis to accept or inconclusive if uh, that's the case. And a final clarification is what the test does. What the test do now? Fisher's and Neiman Pearson's tests, they don't uh, test hypotheses. They use hypotheses for the test, but they don't test the hypothesis themselves, like, as by its procedures does, does. So we should also rename this as data testing procedures, not as a hypothesis testing procedures. So what can we say? Uh, if you compare them, these are the new concepts proposed here. And basically, the main uh, conclusion is that a reconceptualization is needed in order to reduce confusion, confusion and foster understanding. If you want to know more, here are the references, and uh, especially the article, the Perez Gonzalez 2014 article, that explains all this reconceptualization uh, much more deeply.